A lot of people don't like this map, but, you know. I hear Zergies like this map. Yeah, it's a very good map for Zerg. I, I really think we should have played on the MLG, though, just because... This gold here can be taken by third, and it's ladder metal. Yeah, I really yeah. think we should remake. I don't know though. We can't tell them anything because it's not referees. Yeah. Yet, but um, this gold here, the Zerg can take it as a quick third, or even if they want to be really risky, take it as a quick as a second, and that can just boost their economy so hard. And that just can, that's that's like how they overrun. Protoss in this situation. I patch all of you. We're gonna see the in base. We are gonna see the in base pylon, which is gonna go ahead and make me think that this is gonna be a gateway expand as opposed to a forge fast expand. Well, it's very hard to forge fast expand on this map. It's not impossible. You have to do like a nexus wall, which is kind of weird for some players. You might feel safer doing a three gate expand, or even seeing to start to get more common a one gate expand and a four gate pressure, which is really powerful at these games. At, um, in this matchup and probably definitely this map right now since it's so open. Unfortunately for Prodots, he's gonna go ahead and scout with his scout with his probe the first uh, the first base that he tries. Uh, this is really gonna this is really gonna uh, gonna help Prodots out to um, to to not get caught um, off guard. By any chance, yeah, definitely. But it looks like it looks like Mulus is definitely going into that same style of play in that pool at 15. Or 14, I believe. No, that's 15, I believe. And, oh, uh, actually going up to the 15 drone again before taking the expansion problem. Just the standard 15 15. Let's do that stuff with him. Uh, and just about 240 is when this hatchery wants to get plopped down. This poor little probe is, has the job to go ahead and be that that right, guy. Down, that down. douche. No, that can't be quite so. That was a good pile. He might opt to go take the third first instead. Actually canceling that pile on. I think that was a should have just left it there and he delay that a little bit longer than usual. He did have his pool up first though, he might have thought about that. And we're seeing six lings gonna go ahead and be in production and I, I believe they're gonna go ahead and get rallied right to the opponent's base. What <laughs> Uh, it might go check the opponent's base. I don't think they're going to get rallied to it, though. Not good. This isn't going to be a really aggressive push. It's going to be just what is going on at his base. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, these lings are going to go go ahead and run around and uh, try to catch this probe. I would love it if you just went ahead and just uh, designate one ling to chase the probe and just sent the rest because right now, it's, uh, he, I think he can catch Protoss off guard. He might actually lose his probe. Wants to deny that third as long as possible. And this time, we actually see Zerg taking a gas before. Might go for that early speed, or might go for a two base. Roach Bush might go for some units, might go for a lot of things. But right now, it doesn't look to be showing that he's going to take that quick third. And here come these lings. I think they're going to be a little too late to the party to really get anything done. But he is going to be able to scout the timing of the Nexus. And, uh, and, yeah, and he's yeah. going to be able to make that call if he wants to go ahead and use that lobby for his army or for his economy. We're actually seeing uh, one gate expand. Yes, so, excellent. Ooh, bad force field actually. You might lose that. Don't lose that sentry. That sentry is oh. going to go ahead and plop. Ooh, that sentry is going to pop. Oh. Yeah, that's kind of bad. And also going to let this thing scout around. Just see that he's only... I wonder with that victory, what, if Zerg's gonna go, go ahead and if Zerg wants to make an army, or if he wants to go ahead and just grab his third as fast as possible. Maybe well, he should. He should just go for the third, but depending on what it's actually weird, this is weird. Man. Well, we do have right. speed on the way, and only one drone left in the gas. Yeah. I was like, what is this going on here? In that, not walling in with the forge, walling in, having okay. Yeah, this is very interesting. Uh, very interesting uh, Sim City that we have from for the uh, for the natural Protoss. Yeah, it's a different wall. If you usually see the pylon where the forge is and the two gates right there, or a forge and a gateway. This he opted to go for the pylon right at the corner. Yeah, I'm not sure why he wanted to uh, leave this little gap with the between the pylon and the uh, and the ramp. But it does look like it's on purpose. There's no gate. The, it's not. It's not able to go through. You can't go through it. It's a full oh, wall. Okay. It's, 
it's a little bit different. I think he I think he messed up on his wall. I thought a pylon in a gateway would do it and just realized that there was a hole. Now if Protoss can catch these links, it might be a good victory for him without losing too much. And we do have hallucination Actually, on the way. They're popping out a lot of links right now. Might want to go and harass that third. Yeah, we do Very have speed third. just about to finish up. These things are gonna go ahead and meet up and discuss their evil plans for this natural. This is this is a very open third, really hard to hit those perfect four shields unless they get into that back mineral line. And I like this position from the sentry. And here we go, Zergi gonna be the aggressor. Yes, definitely. He can he can hit those four shields. Come on, hit. Come on. Come on, we need those six four shields. One, some good one four sentry shields. down. One sentry. Very, very, very nice. A decent push from Zerg. Actually lost, lost a good amount of lanes. Okay, um, okay. We're gonna see a Baneling nest on the way. This is gonna be a two-base shenanigans coming from Zerga. He wants to punish this natural. He's gonna keep going though. A Baneling nest might be really good here. If he can get these sentries, which he is doing, get these sentries to waste these force fields right now. For exactly. a couple of lengths. And then rush those banelings and hit those throws. We are going to have almost a maximum really? of three force fields in the bank, I think, when this hits. I think this is going to be really tense because this energy for the sentries, like you said, is running low. And it just in general, it doesn't have that many sentries. But this this may come down to a Sim City. Uh, is the Sim City that uh, the Protoss put down, is that going to be enough to deter this if attack? He can catch these links. He caught a good amount of links right there. That was really nice. That was a lot of links. Not we lose a lot just for one force field and really good. Hey, but here there's more than seven Banelings right now. They don't have speed on them. No, they don't. Ten more links about speed. to pop out. Yeah. Getting more and more force fields yeah. just like you're saying. I don't yeah, know if it's worth the links. Yeah, definitely. At this point he has like six, um, how many is that? That's seven. He has seven, um, whatever. Going for that. Good force field right there. Another force field needs to go down. Another force field needs to go down. Very good defense right now. I really think what Zerg is doing is... No, he, he can't go for this right now. There's too many sentries. They're just going to keep regening, and he's not going to have enough to get through. He's pretty much all in at this point. I mean, if you look at his natural, it's saturated and his main saturated. But this is a lot of drones that aren't hitting. Great force field on that pylon. And all I'm the banelings go on this on this gateway. And just with yeah. that, with those banelings going down, we do see all the lings returning back home. It does look like Zerg is going to put back on his macro hat um, because uh, he's going to go really ahead and call it. To. Really needs to. He needs to stop trying to. And the layer is on the way. Are we going to see? A, are we going? To, are we going to see a switch to Muta? Do you think that would be possible? I see a Colossus coming out right now. Do you see I double do. gas on the natural? Definitely a Muta is possible right now. Link family Muta, it's very I mean, basic strat. A lot of first, a lot of um, early, this is a diamond turn, but a lot of early zergs do go for that strat. It's okay against, against uh, Protoss. I mean, they have armored units, they're really beefy units with the shield and everything. They're not like Marines, they don't just die to one Bane. But with this, the way, the way Protoss is playing, the only way I can see him actually getting some Bane hits off of this is getting Overload drops. He's going to just Force Field Donut, and that's that's not going to let any Bane hit. Now, judging by the judging by the positioning of these uh, of these creep of these uh, spine crawlers, <laughs> um, it, do, it it makes me think that we're going to see Zergi take this take this uh, this uh, this gold right in the do, right in the yeah. middle. The, the, taking this gold might actually put him in the head right now. Which he was really like, I wouldn't. Okay, it wouldn't take him. It wouldn't put him ahead. I wouldn't say it would put him ahead per se, but might close to bring him back into this game. A lot of creep going down. Uh, <laughs> why? And this is going to be really interesting. I want to. I want to remember this time because uh, the moment that Zergi ran away and had to uh, went ahead and said that this this strategy isn't going to work for yeah, me. I need to go spy. and switch into something else. He plopped down his lair and then he plopped down his spire. And his spire is oh, about halfway yeah. done. And it's 13 minutes. And I think this is the. I think this is becoming the window of opportunity that Protoss has to go ahead and uh, and attack before the spire finishes. 
I even even if the spire finishes, I feel like Protoss is still ahead right now. He's got he's got a good amount of stalkers and good amount of sentries to flight. If he goes muted, it's gonna deny them them glails pretty good. Because muted glails don't do that much damage against the um, guardian shield. Guardian shield. And it's just about 14 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and see this Protoss death ball push out. I feel like this is GG right now. All he has is wings, unupgraded too at that. No Banelings being walked in. 13 mutas on the way though. Might be able to force, if he's smart about it, he might be able to force Protoss to go back. Or force an all-in situation and try and defend, but other than that, this is going to be a really hard push to defend. Yeah, I do think you're right. I do think it's just too, I, th I do think Zerg just isn't, isn't going to be able to scramble up enough of an army. Yeah. He wasted way too much on the, um, on really just that Bane bust. That's what did it to me. He wasted, wasted Larva, couldn't get those drones out he needed. And these mutas yeah, and these lings are all going to go ahead and engage. Right now. Try to do a big hug. No more lings are left. No more lings. All these mutas are going to go down. Mutas one being so delicate. Colossus. That's GG, man. Taking out one Colossus for those mutas and these. Mm -hmm. That's over. And... Peros is going to go ahead and defend the two base Zerg and go ahead and then push out right around the 14 to 15 minute mark and make that look uh, very, very one-sided of an engagement. And Grimmit in the chat room is going to go ahead and tip his hat and say, good sir, well played.